All through grade school, I didn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. And every year at the beginning of school, it was my job to explain to my teacher why I wasn't going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. But I realize now that's like, it's a big thing to spend your entire formative years going through what for me was a ritual in which I was defined as something separate from all the people around me. My name is Peter Negrini. Uh, I'm a projection designer, and I was nominated with Robert Brill for the best set design for Ain't Too Proud. And I was also nominated with Ken Posner for the best lighting design for Beetlejuice the Musical. You have to be someone who's willing to step outside of the norm. Making art by following the rules is sort of the antithesis of making art. I was a passable singer. I did once act in a play. I acted in Tartuffe. The night that I uh, missed two of my entrances, and I only had two entrances, was the night I realized maybe this wasn't what I should be doing with my life. By the time I was, a, was in undergrad, I was clear that I wanted to be a designer. If I were to give advice to my younger self, would be to take fewer theater courses. Ultimately, making theater is a craft, and teaching it in an academic environment is something that I'm not so sure is the best course. And at Dartmouth, I had that opportunity. By the time I left Dartmouth, I designed 22 productions. It was because I was the only guy to do it. But that experience, just that repetition of making things is what's critical. I started out as a lighting designer and as a scenic designer. Then eventually, years and years later, 10 years after I left Dartmouth, sort of came on the idea of, of projection design at a time when the field was still in its infancy. I'm so fortunate that like I started doing this right at this moment when the whole field was sort of in the process of coming into being. All of a sudden we could make things at almost the same speed as performers. One of the things that I think is so important is we are making live theater. The, the live performers must always be the beginning and the end of what we're doing. And so when I come into the room with, you know, several million dollars worth of computers and God knows how many projectors. The, the goal is ultimately to make all of that equipment uh, subservient to the live performance and the actors. And what projection allows us to do is borrow all those things that have been developing over the last hundred years in the movies and bring them back into the theater. And I think that there's a, an attraction to live performance now that's, that's new, that people are all of a sudden realizing that things that are pre-recorded don't have that um, immediacy. And what they desperately want is a real, live, sweating, <laughs> maybe, you know, nervously shivering human being on stage. And then we can build around them something that is a, some sort of hybrid between an old idea of live theater and a modern idea of sort of cinematic storytelling.